H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. started recording okay so today we'll discuss on one of the key topics which is uh, which is creating a three tier uh, three tier project or three layered architecture project so now before that uh, how many of you know what is a class library anyone knows what is a class library i told this dll yeah it's a dll so class library is a dll so so we we saw that we learned what is the difference what is the advantage of using web service over dll we also saw what is the advantage of wcf service over web service so wcf service is a combination of uh, .net remoting web asmx services and uh, so where you where wcf supports multiple protocols and we also saw that the uh, disadvantages of uh, class library is something like you have to refresh the dlls but whereas uh, whereas we are using web services you can just update the service reference the methods will be added okay so what we'll do now is we will try to create a three tier uh, three tier project or so let me open ms paint now so sometimes uh, sometimes what happens is whatever logic you're writing for example let's take uh, let's take you have a mobile application and uh, and let's take you have you have a desktop application so here let's take gmail so simple method will be there gmail um, gmail take for example you want to log in so so you have uid and then you will have a text box where uh, you will have a text box for uid and you'll also have one something called sorry password and again you will have a text box so now let me move this little bit this side okay so here so and then you'll have a button for login So let so this is this is assume that this is a mobile UI and in the mobile you have user ID password and login. And now uh, the same thing if I if I if I do for example even in the desktop application we'll have the same thing. So sometimes the uh, the difference between uh, the normal difference between uh, desktop applications or mobile applications is something like uh, we'll have lightweight images there or lightweight uh, controls in the mobile application because the RAM size of mobile is uh, normally one one GB RAM. Whereas for desktop, you'll have normally up to 4 GB or 8 GB RAM. So performance-wise, you c and also UI, uh, user interface size for a mobile will be very small when compared to uh, desktop. So for that reason, normally when you are designing uh, mobile applications or desktop applications, you have to ensure that the size uh, images uh, which are loading, uh, sometimes even some mobiles will not support, uh, will not support all the all types of images. So have you seen that? Anytime when you try to open an image which you have taken with your mobile or camera, it will tell you uh, it is not supported. The image is not supported. Anytime you have seen that? So, so for that reason, for that reason, always we have to ensure that the mobile applications which are which you are developing are less size when compared to uh, the desktop applications but some functionalities which are which you have for example let's take uid and password so when i enter user id and password when i click on login so the moment when i click on login 
So I just need to verify whether whether the user ID and password which I am entering is matching with the database or not. Is matching with the values in the database or not. If if they are not matching, I will display either URI, UID or password is invalid. Okay. So now, so in this case, both both the mobile and uh, it it just returns true or false. The method will only return true or false. In this case, what I can do is, I can actually reuse the functionality which I have written for. Uh, which I have written for desktop, I can reuse the same functionality which I have uh, uh, for for mobile as well. So assume that I am writing the logic on button click. So for example, let me create a project. I am opening Visual Studio 2013. Okay, now I am going to create a web application. So file new project and uh, I'm going to I'm going to select asp.web application and 2012 I'm going to select asp.net empty web application and I'm going to give this as um, business logic layer so or let's take this as my website So here I am writing this. Uh, for example, we have the Solution Explorer, and I have here my website. And uh, now, let's take uh, let's see the scenario which uh, uh, where I have my web page. So right click on this, add new item, add new item. I'm going to add login page. So a web form ASP dot web form. I'm going to add here login dot ASPX. And then what I'm going to do here, I have one login.aspx page, which is getting created. And then I'll add one more page called home.aspx. Add new item. I'm going to add home.aspx. So let me add home.aspx. OK. So now I am adding another page uh, I'm giving the name as home.aspx and I'm clicking on add so now I have two pages uh, one is login.aspx one is home.aspx so what I wanted here is let's try to understand uh, how we can actually do validation before proceeding on uh, three layer architecture so login.aspx I can write the l I can I can actually add here um, user ID and I can add a text box ASP colon text box ID equal to txt user ID and then I can give runner server and then I can add a new tag br tag and then here I can add password and again ASP colon text box ID is equal to txt password and what is the things uh, I need to add here if I type like this I will be able to see the password so so what do I need to do here to make this as password box yeah yeah I I got a mixed answers actually some of you are telling text mode and some of you are telling as type is equal to password so type is equal to password is something which we give which we give it in HTML control so uh, input type equal to password we gave it in HTML but when you when you are doing it in .NET, you need to give text mode equal to password. So the moment you give text mode equal to password, your IAS will convert this into uh, proper HTML input. So I have to give here text mode is equal to password. Okay. Now now I have added this. Let me add a br tag. And then I'll write here. Uh, I'll add a button here. So ASP colon button ID is equal to BTN BTN uh, login and then run it server and then I'll give text is equal to login okay so we are good now so so what we'll do now let me see designer so we used to do like this we used to create a uh, uh, user ID password and I'm not aligning this into center or whatever you you know that already and now when I click on login ideally what I need to do if if the use if the details are correct 
if whatever user ID password is correct I need to log in I need to uh, send this to home page okay so this if I do it here on button click so I cannot reuse the same functionality for mobile application for that reason what we can do is I can actually uh, do it in a separate separate project so now let's do one thing let me create a uh, one class library for business logic layer so now right click on this add new item add new project and I'm going to add visual C sharp class library and I'm going to add here um, business logic layer I'm going to name it as BLL business logic layer dot my website so you'll understand why I have to do that so I'm giving this name for this class library BLL dot my class library my website let me add this so now I have one I have two projects inside the solution one is my website which is a web application and the other one I have a class library okay let me delete this class one dot CS okay so now I have one BLL for database layer let me add another another class library project and I'll name it as uh, 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 database layer DBL I'll put DBL dot my website so right click on this um, add new project I'm going to name that as class library again class library and I'm going to name it as a DB layer so DBL DBL I'm not putting DLL because again we'll have a confusion so actually I'm um, putting database layer dot my website click on OK so now I have uh, uh, like this in normally when you join any project or when you join any company you will see three, three layers so so now one is my website is web application and and this is DB layer my website and business logic layer my website so what I need to do now is in DB layer I'm going to I'm going to delete this and add one class right click on this add new class add new item and then I'm going to select code class and then I'm going to give give the name as uh, let's take I'll give some name as uh, uh, my DB class okay I just gave the name as my DB class and uh, I'm going to add the class inside my database layer and click on add so here what I'll do is I'm going to add method for validating the user ID and password so what I'll do here I'll write like this public uh, public bool I'm using bool validate credentials and string user ID and then string password okay so I'm going to write I'm going to write like this validate uh, credentials I'm going to give the name as user ID and password okay now now how do I need to write the code here this this you already know it let me quickly do it you should be helping me if I'm doing something wrong here okay so let me create a table database table uh, new query let me create a database table with user ID and password so um, let me connect to US batch I'm going to use the database called US batch and then I'm going to um, okay so create table let me give login login details and I'm going to put the names as um, user ID varchare 20 and then password varchare 20 and let me create this table so now I'm going to add one login to this create uh, create table sorry I'm going to give one user ID make, make and then I'm going to give uh, the password as password okay so let me execute this 
so now I have added one values uh, make and password so if the user is entering make and password I'm going to check that and I'm going to verify now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write the logic which you already know this already know so let me do it quickly so we normally write a stored procedure here but I'm going to write directly uh, select query okay so now I'm going to do using system dot system dot data system dot data dot SQL using system dot data dot SQL client so I'm going to do it very quickly first thing I need a connection so SQL connection CYNN is equal to new SQL connection so all this time uh, we are putting the connection here so uh, we can even do that in web.config I'm going to give that as homework to you it's very simple and try to research on that how to add uh, values in the web.config file if you're not able to find it I'll tell that in the next class so either you can do it in here or you can actually do it here in this file in web.config file you can add here uh, there is something called app settings and you can add here add key is equal to connection string and then I can write here value is equal to you can write here um, um, data source is equal to make not PC and then um, and then you can write here uh, initial catalog initial catalog is our US batch uh, our database and then I can give integrated security equal to true so in web.config uh, normally when you open inside that you can put one tag called app settings and inside this app settings tag you can add something called add key is equal to this and value equal to this so when you when you add a line this one you can actually access this the reason why we do like this is sometimes in your database layer you might need to uh, you might need to write this connection string in many places in that case uh, uh, if you write it if you hard code in the file you have to change it in many places but when you put it in web.config and try to access this from uh, wherever you want so in that case you might sometimes what happens right uh, your server might be down you might have to change the server name make that PC to some other server name so in that case you have to search for all the files wherever you're writing the connection string like this if you're writing the connection string in your code so for example uh, if I'm writing like this in many places in my code so so I have to search for this wherever I have written my connection string so instead of that uh, we have something called we can add it in web.config file and and what we can do is we can get the value from web.config file so how to get that here is we have something called configuration manager so configuration manager so let me do one thing it is there inside your using system dot configuration now let's try to understand let's try to see whether we get or not yeah we have configuration settings dot app settings dot act there are two ways to do it so let me see whether I'm, I'll get the other way let me add that uh, references let me add that here in the, in the so I'm doing in, in DLL so database layer logic data layer logic so so what I'll do here is I'm going to add reference I'm going to add go to assemblies I'm going to add system dot configuration okay so I got it so now I, I added the system dot configuration here so let's see whether I have that or not so I have now configuration manager dot app settings dot get so if I write like this if I give the key va key name here so what is my key uh, my key is connection string I can give like this okay 
so please keep this in mind uh, I repeat again um, I went through quickly so I repeat again every time when we are connecting to database in the previous two classes I have written the code in here connection string here so the the disadvantages of writing connection string here is imagine I have my co code files and I have uh, multiple code files in my project there are 20 to 30 code files where in every file I'm con I'm hard coding my connection string here instead of getting it from web.config so in that case in future if my if I have to change my uh, server name I have to search for all the connection strings and I have to change it instead of that what you can do is add add in web.config file single place and every time when you are getting uh, getting the connection string get do write this code configuration manager dot app setting dot get so this will uh, for this is this is key so for this key whatever you have it in your web dot config it will get the value okay so so is it clear all of you okay so that is the reason we normally use uh, a web dot config file web dot config file is normally used to add all the configurable values there okay so previously we learned about custom errors custom errors where we we put HTML status code equal to 404 or, or whatever respect to error codes we are redirecting to the some error page even that we added in uh, web.config there uh, uh, we got a question saying like uh, whether we can add uh, multiple codes multiple HTML status codes anyone try to research on that whether we can add 404 comma 405 comma 406 like that okay yeah okay so that's it that's about connection and command um, for BLL dot my website also I have to do the same thing system connection con no system no connection and configuration manager. BLL will not have any details about connection so BLL is for business logic layer so I'm going to tell that DB layer is the one which you where you write the code for connecting to database so in BLL you will not write so I will I'll tell what is why we need BLL why we need DLL uh, uh, DBL so only your database layer will have the code for connecting to database so BLL will not have any code for connecting to database that will call this layer okay, okay so I'll make it clear before end of the session I'll make this clear so now I'm writing command so SQL command CMD is equal to new SQL command and then here I'm going to write uh, connection command what is the command I'm going to write here select count star from uh, from what is the table login details select count star from login details where um, where this the column name where user ID equal to so I, c I can do like this count star from login details where user ID equal to um, let me give here Magnat and password equal to password okay so now if I execute this I should get count value as 1 if I'm not getting count value as 1 that means uh, the user and password are invalid so I copied this and I'll go to my application and I'll put it here so instead of this uh, UID I'll put here plus plus so I'll put here double quotes and then I'll put here plus plus and I'll add here user ID and I'll add here double quotes and I'll add here plus plus and I'll add here uh, uh, password so now I have uh, I have the details of user ID and password I'm just checking select count start from login details where user ID equal to this and password equal to this now so if uh, I have this command ready I have connection ready so I have to add one more thing here I have to tell about what is my connection so let me put here con now I will ask a question to all of you 
you have to tell me how which method to use it I have execute non query I have something called execute scalar or I have data adapter and data set so which one do you think I have to use here to get that uh, uh, to get the count value so I got a message one message uh, uh, how about others do I need to use execute non query or execute scalar I need to get a value from the database so I need to get a single value from the database which is count value so in the previous class we saw that uh, we uh, uh, Padmini has asked a question how can we get the maximum uh, uh, ID value for that uh, which one we used which method we used we have used execute scalar see I repeat again there are three ways uh, so so let me open this so your goal is to populate grid view then you have to you normally have to choose a data adapter and data set okay so where data adapter will fill data set and you'll give the data set to a grid view data source equal to you will give that to a grid view now my goal is to update a record to update some value in database uh, I can use execute non query so this is used to update or to insert whatever but uh, it will only return you number of rows affected it will not tell you uh, it will not return you any value from uh, from the command you will not get any value from the command it will only execute that query that's all and your goal is to execute to execute a command and to get uh, and to get single value you have to go for execute scalar so now which one do I use now do I use data reporter data set so so by logging in do I have a grid view there I don't have a grid view I just need to check whether the user ID and password are matching or not so so which which method do I think I need to follow here do you think method 1 or method 2 or method 3 yeah I got message from couple of you how about others which method I need to follow method 1 or method 2 or method 3 how about others so why method 3 I got a message from Mauna um, saying method 3 or Sarika said method 3 so why I should uh, do method 3 here in our requirement because I need to get the count value from the command so if I use execute non query I will not get the count value okay now or I don't want to use data adapter data set here because only uh, what happened okay now let's try to go with the method 3 now we need to get a single value so so I'm going to go here in the my website and uh, now I'm going to write here get the so where result is equal to where uh, a result is equal to I'm going to put CMD dot execute scalar okay and then uh, and then what I'm going to do here if uh, convert dot to int of 32 of result is equal to 0 that means return false else return true okay so what I'm doing here I'm getting the value and I'm I'm assigning this this and I'm returning false if the result count is 0 that means the user and password are not matching and in case if they are matching that means their count will be great so or I can put like this um, okay this should be fine so this logic should be fine 
now I'm done with the database layer method so what I need to do here is I need to write the same 